Hi parents, my name is Jen Whalen. I am one of the social and emotional learning coaches for Hamilton County Schools. And today I wanted to talk a little bit about one um, specific core competency or major areas of social and emotional learning, and that's self-management. So self-management is really our ability to manage our own emotions and our own actions. And so I just wanted to read a little bit of this description to you guys it's um, located on the Castle website. Castle is a company that you can look up online. They have tons of great information about social and emotional learning. They've been around for about 25 years, so um, they're really solid and they have great resources. So it says self-management is the ability to successfully regulate one's emotions, thoughts, and behaviors in different situations. Effectively managing stress, controlling impulses, and motivating oneself. The ability to set and work towards personal and academic goals. So things like impulse control, stress management, self-discipline, self-motivation, goal setting, and organization skills. Parents, does this ring a bell or hit home with what you're seeing right now with transitioning from doing schoolwork at school to being at home all day? Okay, these are the skills that kids need to manage themselves in order to be productive. And so we know that children aren't fully developed yet, and they don't always haven't mastered all of those skill areas. And that's why they need our support and our help to be successful in those areas. So today we're just going to talk about a couple tips to um, just increase the likelihood that our kids are going to show us self-management, hopefully, and hopefully reduce some stress on the plate of parents because you know, I think that this is a great opportunity to be at home with our kids, but it also can be stressful because it's change and there's just a lot of moving pieces. So I'm going to take from some things that I have done as a teacher, some things that I'm seeing other people post on Facebook that I think are just great ideas to share for how to increase these self-management skills for our kids. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is a daily schedule. Now, whether you're a hyper-organized type A kind of person or more of a type B go with the flow, I want to introduce this concept to you guys. I was at a training a couple years ago and what, it, what we learned was that um, some people need more structure than others. And anybody can rise up to the level of structure that's presented. So if I'm a low structure person, I can function in high structure environments. I might not need it, but I can function. But if I'm a high structure person, I need high structure, and I'm in a low structure environment, it's very difficult for me to function. So that's one reason that teachers always operate under the pretense of providing lots of structure because we know all kids can do well in structured environments. Um, so one way to add structure to this um, completing work and doing school at home is through introducing a daily schedule. I have one here. Um, Kids, just like adults, like to know what's coming. And so if we can provide schedules, they can be very simple, but just that kind of lay out what the day looks like, it can often bring a sense of comfort and security to um, kids of all ages, kindergarten all the way up through even high schoolers. So this is just a really basic schedule that I um, created. And you can see all the way to this side, I put check marks because there is something satisfying about completing a task and getting to check it off and saying, okay, I'm done with this for the day, we're moving to the next thing. And so I created this for my daughter for the major parts of our academics in the morning. Um, so yeah, we started with reading, then we had writing, snack time, that was scheduled. We'll get into some strategies about snack later, but creating a schedule that works for you. If you don't really know where to start on how you want to schedule your day, one thing you could do is email your child's teacher and just say, can you just give me a little snapshot of what your day at school usually looks like? Um, for some kids, if they do math first thing, they might get hung up on it. School, we do math first. I need to do my math first. And if that works for you and your family, great. If you want to set up your day similar to how your student or your child is um what their day looks like at school. And, and that would also increase consistency because they are going back eventually, right? So that's just one little tip of something that you could try. Um, the other thing that I have been doing that I found helpful is when I got all of the work for the week, I separated work into baggies and put the day of the week 
on um, the bag so that we knew this is what we had to tackle today. It's organized, it's already set aside. We have our checklist in the front and so we're ready to go and it's a good way to just organize our learning and make sure we're getting everything done and we're, we're kind of spacing out the work um, in a way that's even throughout the week. So that's just something that um, works for scheduling. Also, if you guys have an Alexa or a cell phone, Alexa has been one of my greatest gifts to myself because um, we talk about how long we have to do a certain thing, whether it's a break or a writing activity, and then I set the Alexa. And so when we start to hear though, how much more time, I just have to say, has the Alexa gone off yet? Or has my the alarm gone off? No, okay, keep working, thank you. And then I'm just gonna move on. Um, until that alarm goes off and then give praise of course for getting through that period of time and so um, using a timer and an alarm is just a good way to give your kids a sense of, of time especially younger kids who maybe can't tell time yet um, my daughter will even say Alexa how much time's left on the timer so she can self manage her feelings and how much time she has left to look at her work so that um, is something to think about Another thing that I'm seeing a lot of parents make jokes about or comment about is, oh my goodness, my kids need snacks constantly. I live in a house full of snackers. I think that's totally normal, but it can get to be a bit much. So one thing that you can do, I saw this idea on Facebook, and we're going to start doing this here, is you can do a box or a bag with your child's name, and you just put the snacks that they get for one day in the bag. Um, if it's a refrigerated item like yogurt or a cheese stick, you can do a ticket. So I have a ticket that says yogurt. And so Bryn will know at the beginning of the day, we'll have breakfast, and then she has these snacks during the day, and when they're gone, they're gone. Um, now, I also have a three-year-old, and if I gave him a bag of snacks and said this has to last all day, what do you guys think he's going to do? He's just going to eat the entire bag. So... Um, you might want to put other things in place like, okay, we're going to get your snack bag out. You can pick out two things for our first snack in the morning, and you can pick out two things in the afternoon for your second snack. So that's just another idea that you can do. Or back to the schedule, when you schedule snack, okay, when the timer goes off and it's time for snack, you just give your kids two choices. Um, kids love choices. It makes them feel like they have a little bit of control. So as long as the choices work for you as the parent, everybody's winning. And so you can give them some choices of um, different snacks that they could eat. Another great thing to do together to build relationship skills would be to make a snack or cook together. Do something simple. Um, we, we made some Rice Krispie treats together and we tried to integrate some math skills into those, um, that recipe and measurement and things like that. Um, you know... One other area I want to touch on is that it really can be challenging to have younger kids at home when you are working with your older student. Maybe if you have a, like I said, I have a three-year-old. So I've tried to find ways to really include him in what we're doing. So for the example, the other day, um, Bryn's work consisted of sorting shapes. So we were sorting and she was doing 3D objects and looking for spheres and cylinders around the house. And so that was a little bit advanced for him, but he can do sorting. So what I did was I got different cereals and put them all in a bag and I gave him little muffin tins. And so he spent that time sorting out actually a very large amount of cereal, which took a while. And he was very proud that he was participating with us and that he was also sorting. And then it gave my daughter the opportunity to kind of help him and um, just kind of nurture their relationship a little bit. So just trying to find ways to include the little guys in, in what you're doing, I think really helps. And it just creates a happier home, I think, when we're all kind of involved in doing something um, together. So those are just a couple little things maybe to try. Um, if you do try them and they go great, comment. If you try them and they don't go well or you have questions, comment. And yeah, we're just going to continue to be posting different videos that encourage social and emotional learning at home. All the things we talked about today really promote, again, that self-management piece. How can we support our kids in managing themselves? And we can give them some tools, but ultimately we want them to be able to do it on their own eventually, right? So we have to kind of build up their capacity. So thanks for watching, guys, and happy homeschooling.